Hello and welcome to The Coaching Corner, a podcast by RefCoach. We are Jack and Ale, and on this podcast, we provide short, educational conversations about refereeing to help officials improve and enjoy the game they love. In the last podcast, we covered refereeing with club assistants, and in this podcast, we're going to cover refereeing with official assistants for the first time. So this is quite exciting, I think. It makes the game feel a lot more professional. You have a team. You're not on your own for the first time, which difference. is great. Yeah, it makes you know the, the hour or so you're there before the game way more enjoyable because you've got people to be with. I, I love it. I think it's a real step up in refereeing when you have assistant referees and, and you have a team for the first time. Yeah, how exciting when you get your first appointment with assistants and you just are looking forward to it because it's not going to be just you anymore. I remember back in Italy, we used to call each other before the game all the time, meet up at a cafe or, or at a restaurant, have lunch maybe before the game, and you really build up that team feeling. You genuinely feel like you're part of something. It's not anymore just you rocking up at a pitch and doing your game, it's you actually have someone to do it with, which obviously makes everything better. The yeah. social of it, it's incredible. Yeah, and refereeing is really lonely, so it is nice to have a. It's nice to have a team, and obviously, depending on the country, would depend the level of uh, game you're doing with the assistants. I know in Victoria here, we're really lucky that our top level of juniors from under 13s all the way up, they usually have assistant referees, which give referees of a, a younger age and, a, and lesser experience a great opportunity to both referee with assistant referees, but also be an assistant referee. Both are both are really important. So we'll kick off with something you just mentioned, Ale. So leading up to the match, what do referees need to go through if they're refereeing with assistants, official assistants for the first time? The most important thing, in my opinion, is that being the referee, you are the captain of a team. So it's really important the first, the, the first thing to do when you get that appointment is, if you can, obviously get in touch with your assistants. Yeah. Some systems that you get appointment through will give you their emails or the phone numbers. So it's up to you really which you believe the best way of getting in touch. How did you used to do it? I, I used to do it by phone. Yeah. Because we all we all used to have each other's phone numbers from training because we would all refer in the same area in Italy. Here as well, a text message, I think it's very personal. Yeah. It's, uh, it's more, you know, you are a person, I'm a person. Again, we keep going back to that. Be a good human first. Yeah. And a good referee second. So yeah. it's that... You know, you wouldn't email a friend, oh, let's go out for a, for, for, for a dinner yeah. next week. So you do the same thing with an assistant. You yeah, go, I always do the, you know, the group chat. Yeah. Um, I just, I do it because it's easy and convenient for me, but everyone has their own style. But I think the important thing is that you do contact your team. How you do it, that's up to you. Everybody's different. Absolutely. And it's a great opportunity, you know, to go through the basics, which you sort of expect out of everyone, but... It's a good way to coordinate your team. So you can talk about, okay, we're going to get to the pitch at a certain time. Mm -hmm. We're going to be wearing a certain... Yeah, or wearing a tracksuit or wearing a a polo shirt, whatever. Exactly. Just coordinating everything, isn't it? Yeah. And I think one thing to touch on that's really important because it happens a lot in in juniors is that the assistants might already be at the ground. So you might only see your assistants 15 minutes before the game, for example, if, if they're on a game before and then they're coming straight into your game. So you might not have the opportunity to spend so much time with them. And that's okay, but by talking to them before the game or messaging them, it just makes you aware. So you, you don't get there and go, where are my assistants? What's going on? You're worried. It, you just know what's happening. You're in control. And it allows you to be calmer on game day, which allows you to enjoy it more. That is so key. You reduce the amount of uncontrollables on yeah. the day. And you heard me saying it a billion times, expect the unexpected. So as long as you remove as many unexpected as you can, So you know you can control who's going to be on your line. You can talk to them. You can know who they are before you arrive there. You said it right, Jack. You just can be so much more calm on game day and focus on your performance, on the things you can control, rather than, oh, what if an assistant has to run away straight after the game and we don't have time to chat? What if someone has a particular need? Or, you know, what if I've never met them before and I don't know who they are? Yeah contacting your team before just gets rid of all these unknowns yeah. it's that simple it's a, a thing that takes five minutes to write a text message 
Not even, but it changes the whole dynamic. We're not considering, you know, sometimes it may just be an opportunity to plan the trip to the game and maybe you can get a lift yeah. with them if that's your first game, your only game for the day. Or maybe you can drive together with one of your drives already. And that again creates that camaraderie, that feeling of belonging to a team that can only do good to a team and to a performance. Yeah, definitely. Speaking about team culture, on game day, it's a whole different ballpark. Yeah. So, Jack, how do you approach game day with your team? Well, you mentioned team culture. Awesome. Love it. Like, that's a real big thing in my refereeing. Obviously, a little bit different when you're refereeing for the first time because you're not experienced at doing this. But for me now, that's where I really place a lot of effort. Um, And we'll we'll spend probably another coaching podcast talking about team culture for for the whole time. So we're just touching it really lightly. But... Absolutely. And the feeling of being looked after as well as an assistant when your your captain, your referee actually shows that he cares yeah. or, or she cares about you. You just want to work with this person yeah. because someone's looking after it. They show their appreciation and their gra- gratitude for your support and for your mateship yeah. on the day. It's so, so important. So something that you probably haven't had to consider before if you haven't refereed with uh, official assistance before uh, is your warm-up. It's really important to warm up as a team, uh, obviously for the physical preparation, but also it shows everybody that you're the third team on the ground. You're warming up on the pitch, you're warming on it together. And it comes back to what we've touched on on the first few podcasts about preparation. This is just something you might like to think about before the game. What is your warm-up going to look like? You know, personally... I've done the same warm-up for pretty much the last eight years because it just works for me and there's no need to change it. I know it inside out, but there's some really good resources. We've actually got some resources on the RefCoach website, refcoach.org, about physical preparation. I think there's going to be some stuff coming up, how how to warm up on the day, et cetera, et cetera. So check that out if you want some tips and tricks on, on how to warm up with yourself and the team. And then Another really important thing to do, which is different from when you're refereeing yourself, is is make sure you introduce your team to the captains, the coaches, especially at the coin toss. You know, you introduce yourself. Hello, my name's Jack, and this is my assistant Alessandro and my other assistant Benji. It's just these really small things that create these little chains of connection between yourselves, and just build up that rapport with with your colleagues. But also, it lets the teams and the coaches know that you guys are a team. You're working together today, and and you're there to do the best you can as a trio or as a four or potentially more if you have uh, double ARs or or VAR, but unlikely with the first time. But that could be of paramount importance as well when for the the senior assistant that is going to be in front of the technical areas. If some random rocks up and they don't know their name and this person is just running up and down the line and telling them what to do without a proper introduction, what kind of relationship is that going to be? So it's very important to make sure that Anyone that is interaction with players, with coaches, with all the technical areas is known to the coaches because then how many times you see it happening? A coach from the home team goes, Oi, Jack, what was that? What was that? Or can ask questions. Yeah. But at least there is that personal relationship built before the game. So again, we take away pressure of doing that during the game. So you've built your team culture during the week, you've reached out to your assistants, it's game day. And on game day, another thing that you have to consider, it's pretty much instructions to your assistants. Obviously, this is very important because sets the expectations of what you as a referee are expecting of your assistants, of what the performance is going to be like. And what they can expect of you. Absolutely. It's very important. It works both ways, obviously. So as always, 
when you're new to it, do not just make it up on the go, on the day. Think about it. Not wow. just when you're new. I still have my pretty much <laughs> instructions written down. Yeah, well, exactly. But that's the thing. Preparation. I, I think, Jack, I heard this from you for the first time, but fail to prepare, prepare to fail. So prepare during the week. If you have access to more experienced referees, ask them what they think, what are their tips. Or if you have been an assistant before and have listened to pretty much instructions before, take notes of what you like and what you don't and what you think your style is going to fit the best. So then you can go and make another list like we've repeated already a few times in some of the previous podcasts. So you are ready to go and deliver your pretty much instructions to your team before the game. So what do you think, Jack, are some of the things that can be effective in pretty much instructions? Well, I think what's really important is that you tailor your pre-match to your assistants. You know, you may be working with assistants for the first time, but these assistants could be really experienced and that can really help you. So that would change your pre-match. But like you mentioned, Ale, if you talk to them during the week, you'd know that. So you can know how to adjust your your pre-match accordingly. But we're not going to go into how to really give a pre-match. We'll we'll talk about some real basics to consider. um, But, you know, how to go through your whole pre-match could be an entire different podcast in itself, which maybe we'll do at a later date. But I think some of the basics and really important things to cover are obviously offside. And it's really important to discuss how will you work as a team with offside. And everybody will be slightly different. Obviously, the laws of the game are a guide. But it's just about understanding, you know, are there any discrete signals you want to give each other um, to indicate that a player might be offside, but the assistant's not sure if they're interfering, just just for example. It's important to cover other basics. And again, this comes down to how experienced are your assistants, because if they're very, very experienced, you're not going to tell them what to do with ball on and out of play. That's an expected piece of knowledge. But if it's the first time they are, are acting as an assistant referee, then of course you're going to go really into the basics, ball in and out of play, how to manage throw-ins, when to signal fouls. And that's really important. The, the, the fouls is, is crucial because that's where teamwork can add such value because it having other people on the line enables you to have different angles and different views and, and, and makes it more likely that you're going to get the correct decision. You know, another important thing building on fouls is, is eye contact, how crucial that is. So you can tell before the players have any idea what you're going to do. You two know, despite not being able to talk. And this comes with experience, right? You can talk about it all you want in pretty much. But the only way to get better is, is practice, 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 practice and, and doing more games. There's plenty of other things you can talk about in your pretty much. How to signal penalties, the penalty procedure, uh, how the AR can manage technical areas, how you'll support them to manage technical areas. Uh, how to record match details, who's going to record what, you know, there's so much you could cover, but what it comes back to is is preparation. Write down what you want to say or know what you want to say and, and be flexible. And I think one really important thing I was told early on is at the end of your pre-match, always ask any questions because some ARs might have some really common things that they always want to know, whatever that may be about a penalty procedure or or anything. I think it's really important. and Very important. It it makes ARs feel really part of the team because, you know, you're giving them a voice. Yeah, absolutely. But also sometimes, especially when you're at your first times giving pretty much instructions, you might have forgotten something. Yeah. So an AR asking the right question all of a sudden gives you the ability to add that into your toolbox. Yeah. So the next game, you're going to add it to your checklist and you're going to have one more piece of information that you can deliver and you can improve your performance. And at the same time, discussing all these things and asking if there's any questions also really empowers their assistants and let them be confident that you are going to be looked for their assistance, as a matter of fact. And it's not just going to be like if you're referring with club assistants. It's very, very important. So a few key takeaways from this coaching podcast. Um, First one is when you get the appointment, make contact with your team and and start building that team culture. On game day, build on that team culture, warm up with your team, introduce your team to the captains and coaches, make them really feel like they are part of your team and you're the leader. And then pre-match instructions, be prepared and think about before the game how you're going to deliver them depending on the level of experience of your assistants. So hopefully that's given you a couple of tips and tricks to improve your performance refereeing with assistance for the first time, but like we touched on, the best thing to do is practice, 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 and you're gonna get better and better as time goes on. If you enjoyed this podcast and would like to hear more, hit the subscribe button. For more referee education, join our Facebook group and become a Ref Coach member for free at refcoach.org. If you like the work we do, 
You can support us by purchasing a Ref Coach whistle to show that you are part of the Ref Coach community when you're out on the pitch.